We've got some hey, fresh I'm Luis. And I'm and Luis. And you're listening to the Content before. is Profit One, two, show. Three. And we spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn how to turn that content into profit, just go to contentisprofit.com. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You threw me off in there with the, with the show. What? One word th- throws you off? Yeah, you? almost. Almost threw me off. I Come thought you on. were going to say funcast, <laughs> but yeah. talking about fun you know and epic that is what today's episode is gonna be all about and we're gonna be talking about defining what it is to run a no bs show yes and if no you, bs show if you don't know what hmm. bs means google it Good, just google it <laughs> hey fancy question do we have a sponsor today indeed we do thank you for asking good sir you're welcome and today's sponsor is your own the biz bros yes we sponsor our own episodes with content momentum and you might be asking yourself what is content momentum tell me tell me more please. well if you produce a long form piece of content just like this one that you're listening to or watching and you need a modern media team to come and you know just plug and play into your business yes so they can maximize your effort maximize your content your reach and your impact we are here to help you out. Just let us know. Slide in the DM at BizBrosco on Facebook, on yeah. Instagram. And if you're listening to this episode on your favorite podcasting app, go ahead and follow the show because every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, these episodes are dropping with incredible value oh, yeah. that are going to take you and your business to the next level. And please do not forget to go ahead and follow us on social media at BizBrosco because all those bite-sized assets that we call golden boulders are right there, baby. That is right. And if today's guests help you move one step closer to your goal, please don't forget to share this episode with somebody else because you might be doing that same exact thing for them. And here's a little bit of our selfish ask. Please go and leave some feedback. Leave a review, five stars, four, three, whatever it is. We want honest feedback so we can make this show even better every single time. Thank you. Today, we have an incredible guest ready to share some golden boulders with you. We met her through one of our previous guests, and then another guest nominated her to be on the Content is Profit, but she's so popular on the Content is Profit yeah. family. Yeah. I'm just going to say in the, that In the out. Content is Profit network, she is yeah, very popular. So popular. I'm telling you, the power of relationships is real, and that's part of what we're going to discover today. We're going to dig deep into how today's guest is using relationships to scale hers and others' real estate business. She is the founder and host of the Investor Warrior Podcast, a no BS show that will tell you everything you need to know about real estate. She actually managed to replace her all medical professional income in a little more than six months. So if you want to escape your nine to five, listen to her. That is actually extremely impressive. Yeah. Replace the entire income. Are you ready to, to listen to her? Ooh, I am so ready. Okay, I, I got my notepad and everything. Please welcome founder <laughs> and host of the Investor Wire podcast and the new member of the Content is Profit family, Carrie Like. Woohoo! Wow, that is the most exciting intro I have <laughs> ever been. <laughs> have ever experienced. Was a surprise okay? <laughs> It is. It's, it, it's a good surprise. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so for those listening, right, we we're talking right, like right before the show, we we're like, hey, there might be a surprise coming your way. And honestly, <laughs> to be honest, like that makes us very nervous because we're yeah. sometimes we're like, we don't know what the reaction is. But thank you for your positive reaction, Kay. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, you guys have a great energy. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to say after 178 episodes, we still haven't had anybody jump off <laughs> during the <laughs> intro, you know, being offended or anything. I so. Know. I think that's 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 a good sign that's right there. That's a good sign. Yeah, Carrie. So so I mean, obviously, we connected through mutual friends and people that have been on the show. Uh, do you want to share a little bit with with our audience, with the people that is listening to you right now? Who's Carrie? Like, what do you do? And then you know why you do what you do? Because I, I feel it's incredible. Yeah. Like we're newbies on the real estate side of things. We're not mm-hmm. newbies on the publishing. And I feel like this is like the perfect marriage of <laughs> the two things. So that's why Fonzie has that no, the notepad right there. That's I'm ready. It. I love it. Um, So who am I? I am a mother. I am a wife. I am a business owner. Um, I started out uh, as a a broke grad student, excited to climb the corporate ladder because that meant finally I get to make money. 
<laughs> yep. And I was a little bit disillusioned when I got into um, the medical career because I realized very quickly how much I was a slave to my schedule, like mm. patients every hour, clocking in, clocking out. I had amazing, I, I, I fell into this private clinic that I worked for. The owner it was my best friend. I was actually just on her podcast earlier this morning. Um, it was an amazing experience, but but um, it was long days. Um, there's a salary cap when you're in the corporate world. Yeah. And uh, it didn't matter how many hours I put in. I was gonna I was going to reach that cap pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, and the only other way to get out of that cap was to own my own clinic. And that was like, you're like married to a medical clinic if you open your own clinic. I mean, you're there like a lot, a lot. Yeah, wow. <laughs> uh, and I knew I just didn't, I didn't want to do that. I wanted more freedom in my schedule. So when I met my husband, we decided to start our family. And I was a few months pregnant and I was working and I, I was telling him like all the things that I wanted to do after we had the baby. Like, I want to go to Europe in the summer. I want to travel <laughs> everywhere. I want to homeschool. I want to do this. I want to do that. Yeah. And he looked at me and was like, Carrie, that is never going to happen if we continue with our nine to five jobs. Because no one tells you in school that you might have a commute that you're not getting paid for, mm, that you yeah. might take work home with you that you're not getting paid for. It wasn't even the nine to five. It was like all the extra hours that I was putting in. And then on the weekends, I was tired because yeah. yeah. I felt like every day I was getting up and pushing myself. Yeah. It's just then, never the nine to five. It's, it's always good. more than that. It's like the, it's the always seven. more than that. Yeah, it's and like the seven to nine. When you have to push yourself to do something, you'll, you get burnt out. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't being pulled anymore. Like it got to a point where I was just pushing and pushing and pushing and I wasn't being pulled anymore. Yeah. Um, and so I realized that though I loved what I was doing, I didn't love the constraints that it was mm. creating in my life. Yeah. Like I liked helping people. I loved my patients but I didn't want to be a slave to the clock. Mm. <laughs> so I was like five months pregnant when I started educating myself on real estate and I didn't own any real estate at the time we were renting. I owned a crappy car. That was like the only thing that I owned. Um, I had no idea what a mortgage was. I had no, no experience. And so yeah. I just like dove in, I became like really hungry for knowledge with real estate because I realized that real estate was a vehicle that could create the life that I wanted to live. And we, I just, finally I said, you know what, I'm just gonna, I need to, this is what I need to do. I need to replace my income in a six month period of time, working one fourth of the hours that I was working And I need to be able to do it with my new born by my side because I'm not putting him in daycare. I just can't do it. That's just my, I just couldn't. For yeah. me, I just, that yeah. wasn't an option. So my husband fully supported me and was like, you know, it's going to be tough with one income stream, but I think you can do it. And so I ended up flipping two properties and doing like a wholesale deal in six oh. months with the baby <laughs> and I replaced my income and it was like, wow, if I can do this again, I don't like constraints. Yeah. I could make this into something even bigger. Like I could double or triple or quadruple the oh, income yeah. and figure out how to do it while growing our family and just like taking them along for the ride with me. Yeah. And so that's what it ended up turning into is, We grew, over the last nine years, we grew it into a family owned and operated real estate investment company. In fact, my 17 year old was just texting me because he's doing some of the promotional teasers for our podcast. Yes. <laughs> nice. That's so cool. Um, and, and then we started the podcast last year. Yeah. Wow. That I love it. I, I love this story. You know, I love the clarity on the goals once you set them it seems like that's yeah. when you started to take off kind of like probably you discover what is the actual path that you wanted to take but the question that came to mind was around the schedule right because 
yes, nine to five, a lot of people want to skip the nine to five and then they go and, you know, they tell themselves the solution is to have my own business, build my own business. And just like you mentioned that if you have your own medical practice, you still are as a slave to that med medical practice. I think it happens to a certain extent when people start businesses as well, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we've been there. I'm not going to lie. Uh, sometimes we're still here working late at night, right? Where sure. we have to sacrifice some, you know, maybe an afternoon with some friends or whatnot. But you also get tied to your schedule as an entrepreneur. I will say at first, and it, but it's not a must. That is the thing, right? I think people don't really understand that transition, right? How mm -hmm. do we actually get out of that nine to five, even in our own business? Mm -hmm. How was that transition for you? What was it exactly that allowed you to do that? Was it, you know, systems, processes, the clarity on your own goals, or maybe is it a, you know, a, a pro on the industry that you're at, right? That the real estate yeah. maybe allows for that. Well, going back to the nine to five. So it's interesting because we work a ton of hours right yeah. now in our yeah. business. Like I was up at 4.30 this morning to get my day started. Wow. I knew that's like when I have my coffee, I have my <laughs> quiet time. I get, you know, whatever yeah. workout I can get in before and then we had we my husband and I sat down at 6 a.m with our coffees for our one hour meeting because we looked at our schedule today and we're like because we have a one hour meeting every day together That's to cool. go over wow. the business and 6 a.m was our only spot this morning yeah so here's the thing is we work a lot of hours in our business right now but the other day my husband was in the gym we were we have a gym in our garage and our nine-year-old has really been interested in starting to work out we uh picked up jocko willenick's warrior he's got a, a series for kids yeah. i don't know if you know jocko yeah we yep. well we we haven't met him but we know of him, <laughs> yeah. of him right navy it, navy yeah. seal yeah has his own podcast yeah discipline is a, freedom a, 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 yeah. A really awesome glad guy R wrote a few books that i've read well he wrote he wrote three kids books Mm, wow. Um, the, the, I think it's the, the warrior kid series. And so my nine-year-old like read all of them in like a week and wow. he got really motivated around all the lessons that yeah. were in these books. And so he started working out with my husband in the morning where he was literally setting his alarm at 6 AM. So he could go work out with my husband in the That's gym. So cool. And the other day he said to my husband, he said, um, you know, dad, I, I'm so glad that you're not one of those dads that works all the time. Wow. And my husband thought to himself, but don't I work all the time? <laughs> like we have this underlying guilt that, ah, oh, we're always working. Mm, yeah, yeah. But we're working and we're living at the same time. It's like business and life have no, they're totally intertwined and intermingled yeah. in our worlds. Yeah. That we don't say, okay, this is our working hours. This is our family hours. A lot of times they're just integrated into yeah. each other so that we got to go look at some houses. We take the kids and then we go to the beach. Mm. We have a Friday where my husband and I can get in the car. That's like our date day where we go and we do real estate together. Yeah. Um, we work our schedules around so that we can be there at three o'clock to get the kids or we can wake up at 6 a.m. And so for my son, who has always been in this business, he's like, I, I think of him as my business partner because I was pregnant when I started this business mm, yeah. with him. Um, he sees that this is just who we are, right? Yeah. We run our business and we run our family and we do it together. Yeah. And so I don't say like, oh, I'm out of I'm out of the nine to five because I don't clock in and clock out. Um but I wake up and I start working and I'm probably working until I go to bed, but it's because I'm getting, I'm being pulled to at this yeah. point. I'm not yeah. pushing myself to wake up and do what I need to do. I'm not pushing myself to stay up and do what I need to do. I'm excited about it and I get pulled 
yeah. to do it, even though I'm tired sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry, sorry. I want to uh, add a little something here real quick. Um, he's not going to let me talk in the entire yeah. episode, just so you know. Okay. I'm like, this is like constant. Yeah. Every Carrie, single today is just you and I. This is our Step show up. right now. I'm the audience. Um, you know, in the <laughs> description of your show, you, you, you say the no BS show, right? Real, yeah. raw, honest, right? And the other day, I was actually listening to a podcast from Christopher Loghead. His, his podcast is called Follow Your Different. And he was talking to this author that wrote a book. I think, I think it's The Art of Making the Impossible Possible. Something like that. Not, not 100% sure of the title. But he was talking about intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation, mm -hmm. right? I think the regular 9 to 5 is a lot of times tied to extrinsic motivations, right? Like, mm -hmm. what is that, you know, upside that this business has on how much money I can make so then I, I can afford the lifestyle that I want? Is there any of that in entrepreneurship? Sure, 100%. Mm -hmm. But I think there's so much more intrinsic motivation. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I don't want to actually make this comparable because there's people that they love their nine to fives, right? And they're very intrinsically Absolutely. motivated for that. But in the entrepreneurial journey, for those that, you know, go into this world, the intrinsic motivation factor is so huge. And that is what this author was claiming in the book is that that is what is going to take you to the next level, mm -hmm. right? So when you're talking about your life is integrated, right? Business and life, and you don't see it as working long hours, but your mind is constantly going. And we feel that the yeah. same exact thing. Like the other day was 11 p.m. and I was actually reading in bed. And all of a sudden I, I, I carried this little notepad everywhere. And I just start having ideas and I just carry this notebook and I started just like mm -hmm. taking notes at 11 p.m. And my girlfriend's like, what are you doing? Just go to sleep. I was like, oh, I can't. I'm, I'm having this like stream of ideas. And I yeah. think is that intrinsic motivation of being raw, real, honest, really wanting to see the people that you're helping succeed. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I, I just I just think you put it perfectly. Right. That is not one thing or the other is we need to learn how to, you know, integrate it actually in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm not all about like, this isn't for everyone. And I know that. Yeah. I mean, I have close friends who are happy doing the nine to five. They wouldn't be happy. I don't think as business owners, because they value certainty too much. And in business, mm -hmm you can't value certainty 100% and go into business, right? Yeah. There's a lot of uncertainty. Yeah. There's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of problems. And so when I say real and raw, like I don't go on there and say, you know, it's a raw, raw show. Real estate investing is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Anyone can <laughs> do this because that's not the truth. Yeah. The truth is there's <laughs> a lot of people who can't do it because they're not going to be passionate about it yeah. or they're not going to feel secure about it or they just don't have it in them. And that's not something that's some, that's something that's wrong or right. Yeah. It just is what it is. It's not business. Entrepreneurship is not for everyone. Absolutely. Um, and so I do get real and raw. Like there are some days where pff, I'm like, I need a mental day off, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a challenging day. Yeah. But it's interesting because even after the challenging days, I'll still wake up the next day excited to like push through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Like push through the challenges and push through the problems because I know what's on the other side of that problem. I know what's on the other side of that challenge and it's me growing and learning And figuring out how to do it a better way. And I don't look at adversity so much as a bad thing anymore. I think of it as an opportunity. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it is very intrinsic. I went to a Tony Robbins seminar, his uh, business seminar one day, one time. And he said, he said something that at first I was like, that's a weird thing to say. <laughs> But he said that business is a spiritual journey. Mm. And when he first said that, I'm like, mm -hmm. I've never really equated business with spirituality. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But if you think about it, when you go into business, there are so many personal transformations that have to take place yeah. for you to grow your business. There are so many 
mental shifts that must go on throughout the journey of your business in order for you to grow that it's like the famous quote from Jim Rohn. And I'm not going to get this right completely because it's not in front of me, but he says, it's not about the goals that you set. It's about the person who you become while you're achieving those Mm. goals. And it's so true because in the last nine years I have gone through, my business has allowed me to go through so many personal transformations I had to go through them if I wanted to continue growing my business. So absolutely, when I started to think about it, I was like, God, that is so true. Business is a spiritual transformation. If you want to hang in there and like, yeah, ha- hang tight. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, absolutely. there's a couple of things here that I, I mean, the, the whole, your whole story, I relate so much, obviously, because I think we're like it on the mental state. That's like trying to find that or create that own path. That's mm-hmm. that's been there, right? Like for us, it was soccer at the very beginning, right? We were always like, school is like backup plan, right? Like ah, that's fine. And then soccer was the thing, and we we got to even play in Europe, and that's why mm-hmm. we're here in the United States, right? But once that was stopped, we felt a little lost, and we yeah. even gave it a, a shot to get a, a you know quote unquote real job, right? But at the same time, you know internally, at least I was, I don't know, fancy, but I was like, I didn't feel fulfill i'm like I, I need to do more right i need to like d- do something more i don't know what it is like when we first started we we're like we had no idea that we started doing stickers and then t-shirts and then it evolved into this incredible thing that that we have now but i relate so much because of that momentum right like you know yeah. I, and, I, and i love the fact on how you mix both like people talk all, all the time about life and work balance right and in my head mm-hmm. like that always was like Really? Like, why do you have a balance both? Like, to me, like, everything was just one thing, but I was never able to express it, right? Because I was, right. like, too in it, right? But once we start seeing that, for example, we moved the entire studio. I, we used to drive, I used to drive about a couple hours from the house that we live now to our studio and then back mm-hmm. every single day, our studio slash office, right? We moved it in here and now we got two hours back and that's a beautiful thing. You know, I can go pick up my son, mm-hmm. you know, go yeah. take a walk, go take him to the park and then go back, put him to bed. And then if I need to continue and do some things because if we're not on momentum, I personally don't feel okay. Like I need to be in momentum, yeah. right? That's totally okay, right? So my wife is the completely opposite, right? She's very, <laughs> very okay with her job. She's really happy with her job. That's what she loves, yeah. right? And I'm, I don't, I'm not gonna judge her for that, right? Like I'm, I praise that, and that if that's what makes her happy, absolutely, right? But she also understand that to me, like if I'm sitting down on a day off, right, and then nothing is getting done in my head, right? It's like, okay, how can I create momentum? Should I listen to a book? Should I, you know, write something? Should I create something? What is it that's gonna cause that momentum? And I relate so much with your story and the fact that you are doing that together with your husband and you guys are integrating that. And I think that's like a wonderful example for people that mm-hmm. are taking on a on a venture. Right, there are, whether mm-hmm. that's real estate, whether that's business, whether that's a show, mm-hmm. to you know really take a look at themselves and be like, hey, is this really gonna be a part of my life? Right, I don't right. need to divide my personal life from this. Like, is this actually gonna be part of my life? And once mm-hmm. you make that decision and realize that, everything is gonna be so so easy after yeah. that. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing all that and be raw and real and no <laughs> BS like you said on your show. Uh, so I appreciate you for for that. Uh, I think it's gonna. This is a great transition to why you started the show, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. you know a lot of people when they start publishing or they start to put their their thoughts into words and out to the world, that yeah. might add some friction to either their life. Or That's their a business. whole another transformation. That's really. a whole other transformation. <laughs> you know, it ties really nicely with what you said about you know what Tony said on that event on that mm-hmm. spiritual journey, right? Because we make these reflections and we put our thoughts out there and, and we become very vulnerable to whatever is happening out there. So I right. would love for you to kind of walk us through what was your thought process, right? Like uh, of creating your show, in interviewing people, creating relationships. Why do you do it? Yeah. And so on. Yeah. So to add what you were saying, because it kind of ties into this question this whole work-life balance, I don't believe it. most people can balance things mm-hmm. because there's only so much minutes and hours in a day. And if you have so many hours dedicated to family, so many hours dedicated to this part of the business and that part of the business and this part of the business, sometimes there's just not enough hours in the day to balance it all. Especially if you're going to be 
someone who wants to grow in all areas of your life, like when you think about life there, it's so multifaceted. Um, there's so many, there's so many areas to yeah. constantly be improving. Yep. Yep. Right. And so for me, I've always got to integrate. I've always got to be integrating everything that I'm trying to work on, whether that's taking the kids with me, to a rehab, whether that's listening to a podcast while I'm exercising. Mm -hmm. Um, Like my, the most, the greatest workouts in the world are the ones that you do for 15 minutes because you literally worked your entire body because one exercise is working like five different parts of your body, (laughs) right? And that's what I think of when I'm thinking of my day is, okay, I've got this one hour. Could I be doing one thing that's also taking care of these other things, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like when I take my family somewhere, if I have to do something for the business, can I teach them while I'm there about what we're doing? Yeah. Um, are there lessons to be learned, right? Where I'm that's not just true. like, mommy's got to go to work and you got to go with me. So I'm constantly finding ways to integrate pieces of my life. And I went to this seminar um, out in Alabama last year, and it was a coaches conference. It's it's a conference for real estate coaches, because at one time I was a real estate coach, then I took some time off, and then 2020 came and I wanted to get back into being a real estate coach. And so I went to this seminar and they were talking about podcasts how podcasts are just an excellent tool to get information out there, Mm. to generate um, clients in your business, um, to build relationships with people. I mean, so many different things can happen from putting together a quality podcast. Absolutely. And I had never thought about this before. Um, And they were talking about how really new podcasts are. When you look at podcasts versus like YouTube or other social media platforms, I think the latest stat I saw was that there's like 2 million podcasts out there right now versus like 32 million YouTube channels. So yeah, there it's hard to break into the established yeah. uh, content platforms. Yeah, absolutely. So podcasts are great because... You don't even need to do, if you're not doing them live, you don't even need to do your hair. Right? <laughs> you can do them in your pajamas at home with a, a mic. There's not much to it. Yeah. And you just need to have a little bit of knowledge to put it all together. So I came back from this conference and I'm like, what could a podcast do for me? Yeah. Okay. Here are all the things a podcast could do for me. It could generate real estate deals. Mm-hmm. If I have listeners who are listening to my content and they're not yet comfortable putting a deal together, but they've got enough information from me to go out and speak to a seller and now they need some help, could we potentially partner with them? Yes, we could. Okay, so deal flow, that's one aspect of my business. Okay, what else could I use the podcast for? Could I use it to uh, generate private funding? Because we work with individuals who have savings accounts, checking accounts, IRAs and they want to invest in our projects. Yeah. And they want to make a return on their investment by investing in our projects. So we are always looking for people who we can partner with to fund the deals. Could we use the podcast to raise finances for our deals? Yes, we could. Okay. What else could we use the podcast for? Could it be a relationship building tool where now I have access to people from all over the country who do all different kinds of real estate because I'm mostly single family, but let's say I get a multifamily deal and I'm like, oh my gosh, I know who can help me with this. I interviewed Mike. We now have this relationship. I know he's the real deal. I'm going to reach out to him because I was on his podcast. He was on mine. I think he could help me with this. Yeah. Okay, well, that's another part of my business. I haven't even yep. talked about coaching, right? yeah. <laughs> which is originally what I went to this conference for and they started talking about, well, okay, people get excited about hearing this content and now they want more. You could yeah. get more coaching clients from the content. Like yep. I haven't even gotten there yet. That's just another part of our business. Yeah. Plus I get to help people personally grow because the podcast, as you know, in business, it's not all, it's all not all strategy. It's 20% strategy, 80% mindset, 
in any successful business. And so now I get to spend my day talking about the mindset and the personal growth that happens. And by getting it out there into the world, I'm feeding my own spiritual soul by helping others grow personally. Yeah. So, okay, that's another aspect of, so when I took a look at the, and and then how easy it is, right? I don't even, I just have to have a mic and a computer screen and maybe some good lighting and I have to have a little bit of knowledge to publish it or I can hire that out. It made sense because it covers so many parts of our business and can help so many part of my business. So by doing one thing, it's kind of like an inter it's like it's like it's like an RSS feed, right? It's like yeah, getting yeah. it out to all different kinds of it's it's covering all different uh, all different areas of my business. Absolutely. So for the for you listening, right? Go back to minute like 26 and re-listen mm-hmm. all the reasons of why you should have a platform. Like the fact that you sat down critically and be like this is what a podcast or a platform would do for me before you even jumped in it. It's an incredible thing that we don't see often in people trying to tackle this. We certainly didn't sit down and be like, ah, you know what? Let's list all the things, right? For us as our mentors or people like you guys should be publishing, right? And throughout the journey, we discover all these things. I admire so much that you actually took the time to sit down and list all these things. Because guess what? You can always go back in the publishing journey. There's going to be doubt. There's going to be like, man, can I do this? Man, is this message resonating? Wow, are people reacting to this? Am I actually getting a benefit out of it? Like in whatever of those reasons. And we can always look back at those elements and be like, I'm finding connections. I'm finding people that are helping my business push forward. And I'm being developed personally, internally, and emotionally. I'm going through that spiritual journey. Yes. So we can always check those reasons and continue Mm -hmm. to move forward because we all know that consistency is such a hard thing to master apparently right you know we had to build a whole system around it to be able for us to be consistent with this show but i love the fact that you listed out all these all these things and be like sounds good let's run with it let's go apply it and uh and you're doing it and it goes so much more than just the deal right so we we always talk Mm -hmm. about we often you know mention this thing that the 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 two sides of the platform right and the platform can be your show can be uh your youtube channel if you want to tackle that way but in this specific case let's talk about podcasts right on the front end you're going to be creating your modern media team right you're going to creating your 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 content that goes out that gets distributed that gets eyeballs into you and you you're introducing to these new audiences but on the back end you have all these elements that you just you know gave to us which is the mm-hmm. relationship factor the you know the personal development the referrals yeah. the strategic here, here, partnerships here to name a few deal Ooh. flow partnerships access to networks in, you know increase your role decks coaching clients building intimate relationships with your listeners right i mean there's mm-hmm. there's again so many benefits so such much. a yeah. low uh barrier of entry with mm-hmm. such a huge upside honestly and yeah. i don't think we've ever found yet at the moment like a downside to podcasting no. Yeah. Um, we we actually sat down and we we're like, if you know, worst come to worst, what's the one thing that we're actually gonna continue to do, no matter <laughs> yeah. what? And we we're like, we're just gonna continue to publish and do the show because you know, for yeah. us ha- has it changed everything. You know, it saved our business last year, and you know what could potentially be one of the hardest years for a lot of people, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. We lost a lot of business. We started publishing. Everything started getting back up, not just for the clients, but the relationship side of it. We've grown Mm -hmm. immensely. And uh, the fact that we're able to communicate with people like you and have these incredible conversations and at the same time inspire people to actually go out and do it. Oh, that's that's priceless. So thank you for listening. I I have a question, right? So you ask yourself, what can a podcast do for me now? Let's fast forward the amount of time that you've done the podcast for what have the podcast actually done for you, right? Mm. So yeah, we're on episode 31. We just published today. Congrats. Nice. Yeah. Um, so what the podcast has done to me for me is, you know, pretty much everything that I've listed, <laughs> except for the deal flow, because we really haven't been advertising that yet. Mm, I take that back. Someone did, someone did email me a deal. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but 
it's interesting because we we just brought this up, my husband and I, in our meeting yesterday, right? Because we have all these different pieces of our business and we go through, okay, where are we at with them? Yeah. And we're like, okay, what kind of, we're, our, we're now an established podcast. We're on episode 31 and we've been consistently publishing. We're consistently getting our subscriber base up and our downloads. And so now that we have the foundation, we have like the core of the podcast how can we now alter our intro or alter our outro to get what we're looking for? Yeah. Okay. So maybe at this season of my business, um, right. I'm in real estate investing. So I'm always looking for money. I'm always looking for houses, yeah. <laughs> right? Those are like the two things and I'm always looking for buyers to buy those houses. So I'm yeah. looking for sellers, buyers and money to fund these deals. So, okay, let's take a, let's just look at the season. Where are we at in our business? Do we have more money to work with than we have more houses to purchase or vice versa? Do we have a lot of houses, but now we need to raise money? And so now we can look at our business and say, what is it that we need right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, right now we need more inventory, let's say. Okay, for an example, we, we have all these people who want to invest in our deals, but we don't have enough houses right now. Okay, well, now what kind of intro can we start using for the next 30 episodes? Okay, that intro might be, hey, you guys, we're really excited because we just put this partnership program together where if you have a lead and you don't know what to do with it, go to this form, okay? Yeah. We create a, a quick form that they can fill out, right? All automated. Go to this form, theinvestorwarrior.com forward slash deals. Now, this isn't this isn't a real form yet. But, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You know, what, whatever the links. <laughs> Yeah, well, whatever things you tell us is going to be right in the description. Don't you yeah. worry. <laughs> Fill out the form with all the information on the deal. And yeah. if we can help you with this deal, we'll partner with you. So yep. you get to partner with us. You get to learn with us. You get to make money with us. And then how does that help us? Well, that helps us because that's like a marketing tool. Yeah. Like they're bringing us the leads. Okay. And so now we have this money that we can now invest in the deals. Vice versa. Now we have all these deals and we need to raise money. We simply change our intro. Hey guys, if you're interested in investing in us, we work with individuals who have 401ks and IRAs and savings. And, and if you want to increase your return on your investment by putting those dollars to work, here's a form you can fill out with your contact information. Like yep. let's talk, yeah. right? It's just a matter of like switching the intro yeah, or switching your outro, wherever you're going to put it. Absolutely. And so that's, it's it's pretty easy yeah. right to do uh, once you have the core once you have like okay i've got my music and i've got like my style how, yeah. how, like what's my style is this like interview style or is yeah. this just me talking is this me really educating or is this like educating with um, me talking or am i like interviewing people and that's how people are getting education like what's my style what's my music how am i going to format that and then once you get that foundation you're just switching up your absolutely. marketing message basically yeah. absolutely i love how previous to this part of the conversation you mentioned 80 80 percent minus and 20 percent strategy i think we are in the 20 percent of strategy right now right and mm -hmm. what you mentioned is so important right the calls to actions and a lot of people miss that that's an opportunity right there for you know people to take action that's why it's called right. call to action right into whatever it is that your goals are um so you can fulfill those goals for you know your quarter year and so you can actually serve these people that you're trying to help and a lot of people are actually so afraid of putting call to actions of actually telling people where to mm -hmm. go next what and the the funny thing is if somebody's listening for you uh, to you for an hour right in a podcast they probably yeah. want to know more about what is it that you do or yeah. what is next? What are the next steps? Maybe they're not consciously asking themselves, okay, where should I go to find Carrie after I listen to this podcast? But in this subconscious, they're already built. They have so much rapport with you at this point that if you tell them, hey, guess what? I have an opportunity for you. If you're looking to get into the real estate world, we have this coaching program. All you got to do is apply Go to investorwire.com slash, um, and then I'm inventing mm -hmm. another form in here. We're inventing so many <laughs> forms in here. But now this person is going to be like, wow, I just spent an hour with this person. And they also have an opportunity for me to mm -hmm. improve my journey 
I want to do it, right? And they get right. excited and they go ahead. Something else that we've noticed is a lot of people wait and, you know, we are actually not the best at doing this. We actually got to work a little bit better on this, but people wait till the end, either a call to action at the very beginning mm. in the intro or just at the very end. But what happens all the way throughout the show, right? There's uh, so many times where, you know, there are what we call golden boulders, these amazing yeah. pieces of information that people get really excited about. When the excitement is high, that's when yeah. we want to give them a call to action, right? Yeah. So, for example, right now, if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about podcasting, all you got to do is go to contentisprofit.com <laughs> and join the Content is Profit family, for example, yeah. right? Yeah. And that is so important because a lot of people miss so many opportunities throughout their podcast. And yeah. somebody, right, or podcasts are about between... 40 and an hour minutes long. Um, 40 and hours? Yeah, 40 hours. Wow. <laughs> and between 40 minutes and an yeah. hour. And guess what? If somebody listens, have time only to listen to 30 minutes, they they miss a call to action at the end. So we got to right. put call to actions throughout the show. And it's not like you're, you know, you're just like giving them a sales pitch right there, but you're just giving them a <laughs> reminder. You're helping them. You actually want these people to win right that's why we're doing this because we believe in what we do we want to help them move one step closer to their goal so right. of course i gotta make you an offer right it, it, i will making you I, i would be making you a disservice if i weren't telling you where to go next so we could help you yeah that's so interesting that you said that because we've been talking a lot about not only having the intro or the outro be the call to action but if you listen to um really good sales people good influencers good they're constantly in they're it's it's about persuasion if the book persuasion exactly. by mm -hmm. robert caldini it's that constant seeding where you don't even realize these are call to actions, but they yeah. are call to actions. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, you know, yeah, we do, ha we have a coaching program. So it's not like a call to action, like, hey, you guys, if you're interested in coaching, go to this website and fill it yeah. out. Instead, it's like, oh, so one of my coaching students, we just had a coaching call the other day yes. and we got really into this one deal that I'm helping um helping him out with and here's how we put it together and it was it's just an awesome deal and da, 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 da. like that is i just basically told you we have a coaching program i work on coaching clients without me saying hey guys if you want to be a yeah. coaching student go to this absolutely well, you know, it's, it's so it's and it's and it's really too the best salespeople are the best storytellers mm. so if you have a story and you can tell stories really really well where you evoke emotion and you get people excited or you get them to that like edge where like oh my god then what happened like what happened next yeah tell me more you can actually have little seeds of call to action in your stories like tony robbins is probably one of the best storytellers and whether you like the guy or not yeah yeah <laughs> um he is one of the best storytellers i have ever seen Like he'll take a simple story and he'll, he'll, it, it'll take like an hour and you're like on the edge of your seat. Like, oh my God, yes. and then what happened? And, then what happened? <laughs> and the entire time he's influencing you mm -hmm. to purchase his product and you don't even know it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We, we got the opportunity to see him live last year, uh, at fun hiking live for the first time ever. And I don't think we've ever attended either virtual event. We, I, I personally uh, didn't consume any any of his content except one yeah. of his books. Very very few, honestly. Yeah, very few and yeah. Uh, we cried. We were like, <laughs> like what is like? It Real was, men cry. It it's was okay. such yeah. an emotional journey, right? And that's yeah. the stories uh, he was telling, the, the methods and how he presented, and uh, and completely. Yeah. I mean, and I, I, the word I was about to say was like completely sold on him, but it was like it's not yeah. like. I trusted him, right? It's not sold on him. It's actually he he he, he makes you leave sold on yourself. Like you yeah. leave believing so much that you yeah. can do anything that you set your goals to. That if you can get to 
if you can influence someone to believe in their self, because that's what a coach really does. Yeah. Like there's so much strategy out there. You don't need to hire a coach necessarily for the strategy. Absolutely. <laughs> the coach is there to like push you beyond your limits and to see in yourself what you don't yet see. Yeah. Right. Yes. And so my best mentors and my best coaches, they see in me what I don't yet see and they pull it out of me. And if you can do that in a story, like I remember Tony Robbins told the story of Carrie Strug. So I did gymnastics growing up. Okay. Um, I was obsessed with uh, what, when was she in the Olympics? I can't even remember, but I was like, I don't know. I was little when she was in, in, in um, the Olympics and he told the story. And when he was telling the story, it like took me back to sitting in front of the TV <sighs> and watching Carrie Strug on the TV and it was this moment where the Americans were about to win the Olympics. But, and this was like the last event, yeah. she was doing vault. It was supposed to be like, okay, just this last vault and the Americans win the Olympics. She went and did the vault and she injured herself. And you get oh. two attempts. And she injured herself bad, like she was limping off of the mat. Huh. And they knew they had one attempt left, but the girl was literally limping. And I don't know how old she was. She was a teenager. Yeah. Wow. And you're like, oh my God, this is such a tragedy. <laughs> like she, like, oh, th this is just, it's horrible. They were yeah. about, they had it. And now she's injured and she can't do the vault again. Like she's done. Yeah. And he tells the story about, and I remember this so much. And, but when he was telling the story, I was like crying as if I was like watching it again. Yeah. He tells what happened. And what happened was her uh, coach, Bella, was like the R Russian. He's Russian. And he just kept saying, You can do it, Carrie. You can do it. And she, she had a major sprain. It ended up being like a, 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 um, a, I don't know if she tore some ligaments in it, but it was bad. Wow. Yeah. And when you land on the vault mat, that's like, bam. Like, mm. you don't, if you sprain your ankle and you try to vault again, like you can seriously injure yourself. And you could tell she was really injured. Yeah. And you just see her look at her coach and he's saying, you can do it. You can do it. And she's just this little girl and the whole world is watching her. So she has this pressure Ooh. on her. Like, if I don't do this, we will lose. And everyone was so excited because they like had it in the bag, right? Yeah. And you just see her go up to the runway, salute the judges and you're like, and the, and you could hear like the newscasters and they're like, oh my God, she's going to do it. I can't believe it. She's going to do it. Like, how can she do it? Because she's injured, right? And everyone's yeah. like, oh yeah. my God, is she going to do it? Like, is she going to attempt this second vault? Yeah. And sure enough, like you can see she's got like tears in her eyes because she's in so much pain and she's now got to run down this runway, do the vault, land, stick it mm. in order for them to have a chance at winning the Olympics. But she had such, it was like, okay, I don't care what it takes mentality, obviously. Yeah. Right. She was like, like when you're pulled to do something, doesn't matter if you have an injury, right? <laughs> You're like, I have to because so many people are relying on me. And she got, she saluted the judges. She started running down the runway. She did her vault. She landed like perfect landing. She went and saluted the judges. And all of a sudden she just like collapsed in tears. And everyone was like, went crazy wow. because she did it. And it was perfect. And she did it even though she had this horrific injury mm. and they ended up winning. They ended up winning the Olympics. Wow. And when he was telling this story, like he told it as if I was like back watching it again. Cause I remember when I was sitting in front of the TV watching it and I was like, Oh my God. Cause it was like, she was like my idol. And like, it made me, what happened was when you watched her do it, you saw something that could be possible for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's like when you see someone succeed despite such a huge challenge, it makes you question if you could do it. And mm -hmm. I remember being that mm -hmm. little girl and watching Carrie 
do that and being like, oh my God, I just want to go and like practice every single hour of every single day. Like it got me so motivated and so yeah. inspired. And it's because when things like that happen, it pushes you to be like that person. Yeah. And when you can tell that through story using someone other's example, whether it's your example or in this case, it was someone else's, when you can tell it with so much emotion and so much detail where like an hour goes by and you're like, holy shit, what happens next? Has yeah. an hour really gone by? Yeah. That is when you can really inspire people and really motivate people. Yeah. By the way, holy crap, does the hours just flew by? I just say, <laughs> like, and I'm like, we're here just like, tell me, tell us more about this story. Like, by the way, yeah, props. I mean, incredible storyteller. Also, mm -hmm. you, because you, I mean, you live through that in the event in, in real life too. I'm like, please tell me more. And, uh, you know, thank you for, it's for such a great moment. It was just such a great yeah. moment in time. Yeah. And uh, it was just such a great testament to you really can do anything you set your mind to despite yes. adversity, despite challenges, despite whatever is, whatever is pushing against you. Like you can push through it yes. like yeah. she did. And it, and it, it, I don't know. It was just such, such a, a great cool. example. Yeah. It makes me like tear up just thinking about it again. I, I love the passion on how you share that story too, because clearly it means a lot to you. And you know, we all have those stories, right? And and for those out there listening right now, what is that story that you go for? Like when, when things are hard that you were like, ah, oh, man, that, that, you know, I saw that or I lived that. And then hence I can, I can continue on my journey, right? Because mm -hmm. th this journey is definitely not an easy one. If you were looking for an easy journey, uh, you know, go somewhere else. <laughs> this is, uh, and this is a fun process. And I think you carry, you master this because you are enjoying your journey as well, right? You're enjoying it with your family. You're enjoying, you know, everything that you're doing and you're developing this incredible relationship. So I, I thank you for sharing that story. We might have to bring you to the Contents Profit Facebook group and just chat about stories, right? Just like mm. completely in there. By the way, you saw what I did there. Uh, we actually have a, a family <laughs> Facebook group. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we practice what we preach as well. So if you want to the link is right below uh just go there also okay last couple of questions there's two more mm -hmm. and you, we asked you for like two minutes of wiggle room just in case see we told you that sure. this was gonna be so exciting <laughs> all right one action point what is an action point that somebody right that's starting their journey on publishing right or in your case they're starting to look into that real estate world mixed with publishing like what is something that they can do today to get the momentum going with publishing and real estate you choose <laughs> either or yeah well no because they're two separate things um if you're wanting to get into real estate first thing is is you got to educate yourself i mean you have to become a master of whatever you are doing in order to become successful right my the podcast pushes me to know more because if i'm gonna educate i need to know my shit Right. Yep. I need to know what I'm talking about. I when I read books on business or on leadership or in real estate, I now read with the intent to educate. Like I've got to understand the material. So it really pushes me yeah. to absorb the information so that I can become a better investor, a better podcaster, a better everything. Yeah. So become like a fountain, like just take it all in, like take as much information in as you can, but don't allow it to stall you from thinking that you can't take action because you don't know it all. Because I don't think that I'm ever going to know it all. That's I'm good. never yeah, going to yeah. know it all. Yeah. But as I'm implementing, I'm yeah. constantly adding to my knowledge base. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if I make a mistake, I put it into the knowledge base. Okay. I, I know noted that that is not what I should do next time. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to grow from it. I'm going to move on. And now yeah. that's adding to my knowledge base in addition to the reading and the educating that I'm doing on other platforms. Yeah. So start educating yourself and take these little bits of pieces and implement it versus I've got to know it all before I implement like, chunk it down right just chunk it down if yeah. you got it if you if you need to learn how to 
publish a podcast, we'll then do a five minute podcast and publish it. And you're probably going to make a ton of mistakes. I just learned after 31 episodes that my audio is crappy because I've been rendering it the incorrect way. And now I got to go back 30 episodes. My 17 year old was like, Carrie, why does the audio sound like you're in a tunnel? And I'm like, I don't know. And I'm like, he's like, is that every episode? I was like, I think so. This is not good. He's like, I wouldn't listen to that. And it's, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. And I realized why after 30 episodes that's happening. So now I'm like, yeah. damn, we got to go back to all 30 episodes and re-render those because as we add more listeners, we got to make sure they stay with us. Yeah. And if we have crappy audio, they're not going to stay with us. They might stay yeah. with us for a little while. Oh, they- okay, so noted. I'm now going to go back. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. We've got subscribers. We've got people downloading it. It's not stopping some people, but it yeah. is going to stop other people. Yeah. From continuing to listen so okay go back and fix it i, I think you, you could do the new intro like hey by the way guys thank you for sticking with us for the first 30 episodes that we actually <laughs> did in a tunnel so now that we're out of the tunnel it's gonna be you know so much smoother anyways yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love how you put it right and yeah. i'm gonna refer to a previous episode that we did with glenn lundy where he said if you are stuck and don't know what to share right if you don't know what mm-hmm. to create content about that means that you're not learning right and mm-hmm. it boils down to that right i just wanted to tell yeah. a little bit uh to content if you're not learning if you're not educating yourself it's going to be very difficult for you to go ahead and create good quality yeah. content for other yeah. people to consume and the other thing that i love about your action point is boil it down not just consume everything and then you know splurge it all the way to whatever whatever platform you're going to but Reflect on it. What is it? What is the principle behind that one thing that you learn, right? Distilled information and then share your share your own point of view, right? With your own story attached to it. Mm-hmm. And then that is the winning formula right there. But at the end of the day, it's about taking action. Just like you said, right? You want to start a podcast? Minimal viable content, how we call it. Remove all the friction. Just put it out there into the world and you are going to see momentum. You're yeah. going to start, mm-hmm. you know, going one step at a time. And eventually you're going to look back and guess what? You're going to have 31 episodes published. Yeah. Carrie, where, um, where would you be if you did not publish? Where would I be? Mm-hmm. Hmm. If I didn't publish, um, you know, I, I don't know. Cause I'm only 31 episodes in, um, So I don't know yet where it's going to take me. I do know it's going to take me to places I want to go. And sometimes that's okay not knowing exactly where it's going to take you. I've also learned because this is twisted and turned. Like the most important thing for me when I first got started was just to start getting out there and start publishing with quality content. Yeah, And I didn't know why yet. I didn't know where this was. I I knew why, but I didn't know where it was going to take me yet. Sometimes that's going to... That's going to evolve as you evolve the process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I did know that I needed to trust the pod, uh, trust, trust the process, not the mm. podcast, <laughs> trust the process because I knew, again, if it's helping others, success leaves clues. If you want to become successful at something, mm. model someone who is doing it. Yeah. And for me, the first two episodes in, I got feedback from the people I had interviewed and they were like, wow, that was one of the best podcast interviews I've done. And I've done a lot. Like, you're really good at this. And I was like, I am. (laughs) They're like, you're really good. I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. Maybe this is something that I can use. Like I haven't figured it out yet. I kind of have an idea of how this could work in my business, but if I'm good at it, I'm going to go with that. Absolutely. (laughs) So cool. And you have such a great personality too. I mean, mm-hmm. you are also a great guest, by the way. <laughs> so uh, you 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 play both sides, <laughs> which is awesome. So, um, where can people find you? Okay, where can people connect with you? Where's the best place for them to learn more about you and your business? Um, Facebook, Carrie Like. Uh, also on Instagram, Carrie Like as well. We have the Investor Warrior Podcast Show, which is on all of the podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts. Yeah. And then we also have a YouTube channel, uh, The Investor Warrior as well. Awesome. Nice. And we're going to leave all the links down below. So 
grab your thumb. I don't know if you should grab it. Just move your thumb and scroll you, down yeah, and tap in all the. Yeah, imagine just grabbing your thumb and your thumb and then using it to scroll. <laughs> just use your thumb, scroll down, tap on all the links, hit follow, hit subscribe on Carrie's podcast, The Investor Wire. Show her some love. Leave a review as well in her podcast. You know, and connect with her. Yeah. Yeah. Carrie, a- anything else you want to add before we head out? No, I love what you guys are doing. Um, I just, I love the fact that you're helping people get the content out there and also figure out what to do with that content because it's not just about (laughs) putting the content out there. It's then like, okay, what do I do with all this content? Because you can really leverage the content. You can do so much with it. Um, So I'm, I'm excited of what you guys are doing and I'm just grateful for you having me on here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the conversation, Carrie. Uh, yeah, it, it was so fun. Yeah. With that said, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Content is Profit podcast. Go ahead and follow the show on your favorite platform or come hang out with us in our Facebook group, Content is Profit. That is right. If today's guest helped you move one step forward and one step closer to your goal, please don't forget to share this episode and leave a five-star review. 